few times each year, our office updates its independent estimates and projections of California's economy and state budget revenues. Over the next few minutes, James Nachbauer, Chaz Alamo, and Justin Garosi, three economists and analysts on our staff, will discuss some key economic and state revenue trends that are affecting California now. Employment in California has increased in recent months. This is one of the more tangible signs that the recovery is gaining steam. The unemployment rate in California, however, remains high at 11.1 percent. That's down only slightly from 12.5 percent, which was its peak. The portion of the labor force that is unemployed is now more than double what it was in 2006 due to the recession. Within California, people have experienced the recession differently. In San Francisco, Santa Barbara, and Vallejo, for example, unemployment rates have increased less than they did statewide. In contrast, in places like Los Angeles, Riverside, and Sacramento, unemployment rates have increased more than they did statewide. In addition to regional disparities, other disparities persist. African Americans in California, for example, have an unemployment rate of 19.6 percent, compared to the statewide average of 11.1 percent. The recession has also led to a massive increase in the number of people who have been out of work for a long time. More than one-third of California's unemployed, for example, have been out of work for over a year. People who have been unable to find work for long periods of time may face permanent difficulties in the labor market in the future. Their families, communities, and government programs will all face higher costs in the future as they try to support these people. Since 2007, the median value for a single family home in California has fallen from $560,000 to just $285,000. Although home prices have stabilized somewhat in the past year, many homeowners are still underwater on their mortgages, meaning that they owe more on their mortgage than the value of their home is currently worth and others have gone through or are still going through foreclosure proceedings. Foreclosure activity in the state has declined significantly since its peak in late 2008, although many areas of the state, particularly hard hit regions, still are experiencing alarmingly high foreclosure rates. Areas of the state that experienced the greatest housing growth in the middle of the last decade are generally experiencing the worst foreclosure activity now. Many counties in the Central Valley and throughout Inland Empire have worse foreclosure activity than most other parts of the state, especially compared to coastal counties, which have generally fared much better. Reduced demand for housing and other real estate construction has significantly reduced construction-related employment throughout California. Today, construction employment re remains one of the weakest components of California's labor markets. We expect the housing market and related construction employment market to improve mildly in 2012. In 2013 and 14, however, we expect these sectors to contribute more strongly to the state's economy. In the short term, we expect the demand for multi-family units and apartments to be greater than that for single-family residences. During recessions, young people tend to delay moving out of their parents' houses, and other people tend to live together in order to save on housing expenditures. As the economy begins to recover, we expect these individuals to demand rental housing and other forms of multifamily units, which generally will drive construction for these units to increase. Single-family homes, on the other hand, likely will remain a drag on the state's economy through the next year and perhaps a bit longer. Excess housing stock, comparatively low home values, and historically tight lending standards are all preventing single-family demand from increasing above where it currently is. The decline in home values, the financial crisis, and the ensuing recession have all significantly changed consumer spending and savings habits. Consumers throughout the recession face stubbornly high unemployment, weak income gains, and tight credit markets for mortgages and refinancing, as well as for auto loans and credit cards that each required consumers to pull back on consumption and bolster personal savings where they could. As a result, retail sales in California plunged over the course of the recession. Retail sales that are subject to the state's sales and use tax, known as taxable sales, declined 17 percent from the middle of 2008 to the middle of 2009. This is the largest decline 
by a wide margin that we've seen in more than a generation. Because consumers cut back so dramatically on spending throughout the recession, the recovery for retail sales, especially for cars and light trucks, household appliances, and, and other expensive personal items, has been encouraging. We generally expect that this trend will continue throughout the forecast period. Over the summer months of 2011, taxable sales in California increased by more than 8% compared to levels from a year earlier. Also, retail sales during the holiday season were relatively strong. We expect generally that businesses and consumers' spending habits will return to more normal levels in 2012 and subsequently throughout the rest of our forecast. The personal income tax is by far the state's biggest revenue source. Typically, it accounts for at least half of the state's revenue. It's also hard to predict because it depends heavily on capital gains, which are tied to financial markets that can turn on a dime. Most of the difference between our forecast and the Department of Finance's forecast comes from the income tax, and in turn, most of this is because we have much lower estimates of capital gains than they do going forward. Now, most of the economic news we've gotten since our last forecast has been pretty good, but things don't look so good for the income tax. Specifically, December and January are big months for estimated payments that people who make more than about 150,000 bucks a year are required to make every quarter. Now, if you just take those two months, this year we got about $4.6 billion. Last year we got about $5.3 billion. Now, we don't read this to mean that we're headed necessarily headed for another crisis. If you look at 2011 as a whole, the amount of estimated payments we collected over the whole year was pretty consistent with how the economy and financial markets performed. We think the low numbers we saw in December and January were to some extent making up for the big numbers we got in April and June. If people had known back then how poorly the markets would do over the second half of the year, they probably wouldn't have paid nearly as much in estimated payments in April and June. Okay, going forward now, we see some good signs. Withholding numbers are usually a pretty good real-time indicator of where the economy is. We had a good month in January, and now, with only a couple days left in February, it looks like you know, February is going to come in a few points above last year also. As James, Chaz, and Justin discussed, while there are some positive economic trends for the state, there are mixed signals in state revenues. In particular, the recent weakness we've seen in estimated income tax payments as well as weak data that we've received since November concerning some prior year tax payments. Now, in January, we discussed how our November estimates were about $6.8 billion below the administration's on revenues for 2011-12 and 2012-13 combined. Now, all other things being equal, adopting similar uh, assumptions about federal tax policy that, as the administration did, and including an updated forecast of revenues from the governor's proposed tax initiative, we would be about $8.5 billion lower than the administration, all other things being equal uh, due to those negative revenue trends. In this forecast, however, we incorporate for the first time a rough estimate of the revenues the state will receive from the possible initial public offering of stock by Facebook, uh, which could occur later this spring. With that assumption, we end up about $6.5 billion below the administration's current revenue assumptions for 2011-12 and 2012-13 combined. This is a big difference. All other things being equal, reduced revenues make it harder for the legislature and the governor to balance the budget in each given fiscal year. And so if our revenues prove to be more accurate than the administration's, the legislature and the governor will have to develop additional budgetary solutions. But there's a long way to go between now and when the budget uh, is expected to be adopted in June. There will be April when the state receives a large portion of its income tax revenues and makes a large portion of its refund payments. And after then, the state will be in a much better position to know just how serious the budgetary challenge will be for 2012-13.